uh, good evening, everyone. I think uh, accidentally we lost the connection with Ms. Hind. Uh, I would like uh, to welcome you all to our webinar. It's actually it's our last webinar for this forum under the theme uh, of Dar al-Hikma Online Teaching Excellence Lessons Learned. In this webinar, the School of Art and Design is pleased to provide you or to share with you their experiences about the online teaching that they undertook during the uh, uh, the last few months of spring whereby uh, we as the university had to immediately to cope with the situation and to teach online. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, our first presenter, Dr. Yasser Mahjoub. He's the uh, assistant professor. Dr. Yasser, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, associate. Associate, associate professor, yeah. sorry, because I don't because I uh, I don't have the uh, introduction in front of me. Um, I think we lost Ms. Hint Talal, associate professor in uh, the School of Architecture. And uh, I wish you, Dr. Yasser, all the best uh, in your presentation. And we have the honor to host you and to listen to your uh, presentation and uh, the experience that you had. Uh, wish you best of luck and the platform is yours, Doctor. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Doctor. And um, I start to share my screen. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, webinar for the Department of Architecture. And uh, inshallah, it will be a uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Uh, yani I don't want you to. Uh, wait for too many answers as much as uh, too many questions that the presentation will uh, raise and maybe during the discussion we can reach some uh, conclusions or some fruitful comments and uh, uh, conclusions. So the title of the presentation is uh, the online studio culture uh, which is something that uh, we uh, experience during the uh, emergency online experience that we all went through. Um, so the, the presentation uh, poses uh, many questions uh, uh, more than answers. Uh, first, we'll, we'll try to understand what is the studio culture uh, and is there an online studio culture that is different than the face-to-face uh, on uh, studio. Um, according to Miles, uh, shared vision, not shared spaces, create a culture. So um, we lost the spaces uh, that we used to teach in, but we didn't lose the culture we, uh, we uh, teach architecture through. So I'll go back to the beginning uh, briefly. How did uh, architectural education start? It all started here in the Ecole de Beaux Arts in Paris uh, in 1648, uh, where architecture was uh, taught for the first time in a formal way. So students were uh, experiencing the uh, uh, locations and the places of the Beaux Arts, and it was their home for the duration of their stay in the uh, Beaux Arts school. Uh, this is how the Bozar Atelier uh, or the studio uh, looked like at that time. Uh, students uh, used to have their own space uh, for, for working and uh, designing. And most of the old generation present here, they know these kinds of uh, drawing uh, boards uh, and drawing tables and the atmosphere inside the studio it was exactly like this in many, in all parts of the world, actually. Uh, and this is a large studio where the studio master uh, was the head of the studio, uh, who uh, students stay with him for a period of their study, and then they graduate from uh, his studio or atelier. Uh, inside the studio, the students do many things. They draw, they sketch, they make models, they uh, read and study. Uh, when they grow, of course, uh, to the final years, studios uh, start to look different. 
the size of boards, they become larger. The amount of time they spend in the studio uh, becomes more. They, uh, they um, stay in the studio 24 hours for several days. Uh, the studio is like a home for them. And their uh, uh, relationship and their uh, uh, feeling starts from uh, inside the studio environment. Presentations and uh, juries uh, start also from that, uh, that tradition uh, where students uh, display their boards and drawings and there's a panel of jurors who examine them and discuss with them their uh, uh, designs um, in harsh ways, as we say. Uh, so the competency framework of the Bozar was based on uh, providing knowledge, skills, and attitudes. The attitude that is generated from the setting and the environment and the school was uh, very important for the uh, development of a complete architect. From the Bozar, architectural education started to spread in different parts of the world to the AA School uh, of Architecture in, in London, uh, to the Bauhaus in, in Germany, and to other parts, of, and to the MIT in the United States, where it started its uh, own schools of architecture. Uh, so this became a tradition uh, of teaching architecture based on a, on a studio environment. Uh, and uh, it became uh, a, a framework that everything feeds in the design courses <coughs> within the studio environment, uh, knowledge courses, uh, history, theory, fine arts, humanities, urban engineering, all these courses, they feed into the knowledge. And then there are uh, uh, skills based on thinking, uh, personal and psychomotor skills that are taught within the studio environment, and all these are fed into the uh, feed into the designs courses and the studio uh, uh, environment. The teaching was based on project-based learning, and this is the tradition until now. Uh, students are given a project. Uh, whether in a real site or a hypothetical site, sometimes on the moon or Mars, and they are asked to perform the tasks of the architect in a studio. And <clears throat> this is guided by the studio instructor who uh, uh, um, provides them the directions, how, what, what is required and what to do, and follows them throughout the uh, design studio. It, mimics the problems <coughs> that they face in the real world after graduation. Uh, students also uh, understand the interdisciplinary nature of the profession, that architects cannot work alone, they have to uh, work and understand other disciplines, uh, structural, mechanical, uh, electrical, and other disciplines. And each task <coughs> required from the students uh, can have many solutions as many students in the studio. So there is no one correct solution. There are many <coughs> correct solutions or uh, solutions the spot. So students have the freedom to uh, choose their strategies, approaches, and um, they can uh, become engaged together in the learning and understand that they have to have an open mind there. This tradition became all over the world, in all design studios, in different parts of the world, different countries, it became the environment where students work, stay hours over now, several days, and this has been like a, a second home for them. So we don't, uh, uh, we are not surprised to see studios in that condition. This is not for design studios 
where students work and submit their projects and uh, presentations. <clears throat> they also do other things. They make models, they uh, draw sketches, they read, they build uh, um, physical models of the project. They can be working alone and uh, drawing and uh, drafting. Uh, they can also work computers and, and uh, within the studio environment. They can be <coughs> working in their uh, uh, environment. Another part of the, uh, uh, of the experience is the informal. The informal conversations and chats with uh, colleagues on the side, with uh, faculty members, with uh, visitors, with maybe non-architecture students from other departments and other uh, specializations. But these discussions, these personal one-to-one -one discussions are extremely important in the design studio. So students can get uh, critique, uh, they can get uh, feedback, they can get uh, uh, corrections of their ideas, uh, and uh, instructors can guide them uh, where they are going. This is a, a, a learning experience that they all go through <coughs> with their instructors and colleagues. Sometimes they receive uh, visitors from outside, the architects that can give them also feedback in lectures or meetings or before, uh, after the juries. And this is also a, a very important learning <coughs> experience for all of them. Of course, there are some formal, uh, there is the, the, the formal part of education where classes take place in, in, in classrooms with uh, regular classrooms and uh, lectures and so forth or seminars. <coughs> uh, and uh, also very part of the presentations and where students learn how to present their projects. From year one, they have to make presentations of their projects to a panel or visitors uh, or hands or owners of projects. And they have to learn the skills of uh, presenting, uh, receiving a criticism, replying, uh, convincing, uh, understand the different points of view and so on. So this is, uh, this is also part of the uh, learning experience uh, of the uh, architecture students. Um, site visits are also important. Students uh, visit uh, construction sites and uh, buildings under, under construction. <coughs> they all visit uh, finished uh, buildings and they learn uh, maybe from the engineers, the site themselves. They, they talk to them about the uh, construction experience, <coughs> problems, solutions, site safety, so they learn what uh, graduation. Uh, sometimes they also uh, receive lectures uh, uh, out of projects, so they tell them what it is, is their uh, experience or their idea behind the uh, site. Uh, the display very important, displaying students' projects uh, in exhibition or, or uh, uh, I, uh, temporary of another important experience where uh, work of this and uh, other students can and uh, look at these points at any time and they learn from them. So this permanent exhibition going through a corridor that has drawings and models uh, posted uh, is an experience, is a learning experience for students. So students can learn on them on their own uh, uh, time to, uh, uh, to how to uh, uh, look at uh, drawings and uh, learn from them. 
so um, there's also public events. Uh, these events uh, are uh, um, uh, where people are invited to the presentation uh, and to display the students' work uh, different uh, occasions. And this can be really a good opportunity for students to display their projects and their ideas to outsiders. Uh, and it's also a job hunting uh, opportunity for students to meet with artists and owners of companies. Uh, some uh, work can be displayed in shopping mall. So this is a, a work of students that is displayed in a shopping mall so uh, people can see from different uh, uh, disciplines and different uh, places. Uh, so there are uh, different also uh, uh, speakers, uh, public speakers, the, the presentations. Uh, this is also uh, something that happened here at the uh, Hikma, first architectural conference. All these are part of the uh, student's presentation. <coughs> uh, when computers started to, to uh, get into the field, uh, they started to be taught in isolated uh, uh, computer labs. So students go to the computer lab where they uh, learn computer uh, skills and how to operate the computers uh, in isolation from the uh, studio. Uh, but uh, after a while, computers came to the studio environment and became part of the uh, studio experience. So uh, uh, instead of being isolated in computer labs, now we have uh, electronic uh, design studios that integrates uh, computers and technology into the studio. So we started to, to find this integration. Uh, so uh, the student does not get uh, the, the learning experience from one side. It's, it, it's, it's coming from different directions, uh, from uh, different sources, from context of the city or the place in, and different parts of the environment and uh, different people. And so it's not only a delivery of content. Uh, it's a whole experience and uh, a, a whole culture of learning. Uh, suddenly, everything stopped. We have a lockdown and we are suddenly frozen on time. So we didn't know what to do. We relied on the online experience. So the lockdown, happened suddenly, uh, we, we slept and woke up in a new world. It was shocking for everyone. Uh, in the beginning, there was a denial that it would continue. We expected it to be uh, like two or three weeks and then that's it. We go back to our classrooms and studios. Uh, so we, we started like a month and a half uh, face to face and then uh, a transition happened, uh, so, and there was no choice. There was to go to online. It was the only solution everyone relied on. Uh, there was no time for reflection. Uh, we had to, to do it immediately. But our students, they had their own concerns. Uh, how to do the, and present their work to, to their instructors, how to uh, to see other friends and colleagues uh, see in the studios. Uh, so it was really shocking this uh, uh, time of, of uh, so uh, the shift was uh, us rely on online teaching. I mean, online teaching is there for a long time, for like 15 or 20 years but it was never uh, used or utilized uh, effective. Uh, communication started uh, uh, with, uh, with the Ministry of Education, uh, campus closed, 
students went on spring break and we went to familiarize ourselves with the systems and the technology of online uh, teaching and through training implementation and uh, it was uh, learning by doing uh, and after one week it all started again but online uh, so as the comic says, I will teach you wherever you are. I will teach you in a room. I will teach you uh, now on Zoom. I will teach you in your house. I will teach you with a mouse. I will teach you here and there because I can. So just do your very best and don't worry about the So from this experience, and we uh, lost a lot and we gained a lot. So uh, not the experience in the beginning, which tried to uh, and squeeze our traditional teaching method in the new format. Uh, it was most positive at the end, but of course there are gaps and uh, we could have done anything better than what we uh, did. Uh, so now we can think about uh, what will we do next? Uh, what methods do we uh, use next semester if we start our time? Uh, what uh, new format? How to use the new format to its maximum capability uh, instead of fitting what we used to do in this uh, format? Uh, how can we do this differently uh, since we have this experience? Uh, we can look at it as an opportunity to step up and, and be, uh, get out of our uh, traditional uh, working method and think about something uh, different and new. Uh, architects and problem solvers, uh, we, are excited, we were excited to use this new tool. Uh, it's practical. Uh, 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 and we have moved from a student center to curriculum center. And this was understandable due to the uh, problem of time and emergency. We focused too much on the formal delivery and less on the process of delivery. Uh, so um, in the beginning, it was hectic. It was very stressful for both and uh, <laughs> uh, we had these four, we didn't use that. Some students were more prepared than their, their uh, faculty members, or their instructors. Uh, senior students uh, were more relaxed because they depended on their face-to-face -face, uh, personal physical experience that they had before. Seems that we lost the voice of Dr. Yasser. Just a few moments until the problem is resolved. Yes, Dr. Yasser. We still can't hear you. You are muted, Dr. Yasser. You need to unmute yourself. Hey, can you hear now? Yes, yes, it's perfect. Okay, sorry. Sorry for this technical error. Yes. That's okay. Go ahead, doctor. Uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, senior students who are more uh, uh, comfortable or less, less stressed by this experience because they had face-to-face -face experience before, uh, but young students were uh, struggled more uh, because they didn't have enough experience 
uh, in, in the studio and the environment, and they had uh, less uh, skills and principles of, uh, uh, of the, but they both suffered from the absence of friends and colleagues and uh, solitary, solitary work environment and intense work because the, the online work is more intense than the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, work. Uh, so uh, instead of having this experience, as we said before, now students are having this experience only. They are uh, learning through uh, internet, uh, Blackboard, and Zoom, uh, mostly uh, knowledge and formal uh, teaching, and they lost all the other aspects that they used to learn. From. So it is actually um, more, uh, uh, less uh, in quantity, but more in uh, more intense uh, uh, type of uh, uh, teaching. <clears throat> so, what did happen uh, from of the change from of the media from face to face to online? Uh, so, we moved from the drawing boards and the studio environment to computers and online environment. Uh, instead of having uh, instructors and students and drafting tables and drawings, sketches, uh, color prints and, and everything in the studio, now have uh, computer screens, 14 inch or 15 inch screens. This is the limit of our uh, size. Uh, and uh, we don't have tracing paper, so we have to use annotations on the screens. Uh, and uh, to communicate with the students. We depended mainly on Blackboard and Zoom. These were our means of communication. So classes were scheduled uh, regularly as if it's uh, face-to-face -face, uh, classes uh, through Zoom. Uh, documents were exchanged through Blackboard and uh, uh, of course, uh, WhatsApp groups were, uh, were started to send alarms or send the announcements quickly and communicate quickly with, with, with the group. Um, so um, projects were reviewed online uh, and notations on computer screens. Uh, everything 14 inch or 15 inch size. Uh, office hours were also scheduled uh, through Zoom. Uh, time management was terrible because actually everyone was working 27. Uh, Men go forth uh, middle of the night. Uh, everyone was watching uh, emails and messages time. Uh, juries were invited uh, from all over the world and this was a good thing. Uh, so we, we opened up to the uh, different parts of the world. Uh, Non-design and lecture courses were uh, uh, using uh, like Cornell notes. So students take notes during the lecture to assure their attention and questions. Uh, participation uh, through discussion presentations, examinations, it's using Blackboard and Zoom. So uh, we used to have uh, uh, reviews on screens and annotations by instructors on the screens, uh, providing some feedback on, on uh, students' work. Uh, also, um, uh, exams were, were uh, delivered, uh, lectures were given, recorded, and uploaded so students can find them any time. Uh, whenever they, they want. Um, and uh, this is the easy part of the, uh, of the process here. Uh, exams were difficult, were very tricky, how to monitor students during the exam. So they had to use their mobiles so that we can see the screen and uh, uh, trying to assure that there is no uh, out uh, assistance. So um, this was yeah, I mean, as much as we were able to, to do. Uh, attendance was uh, also uh, done through the uh, participants' uh, names. Uh, and, and this was a whole yeah, experience that we went through. 
uh, it was the emergency, it was uh, quick and it was fast. Uh, the important thing was to uh, continue the process or the, the semester uh, uh, with uh, at least interruption as possible. Uh, now we finished the spring, almost the, the summer is finished, and now the fall is coming. Are we going to start online or face to face? Uh, what changes do we need to implement before the fall term starts? Uh, how can we start more balance uh, and uh, understand what worked and what didn't work and how to uh, organize the transition uh, to that new uh, environment? Uh, first question we ask is what do we exactly do? We, we had face-to-face -face before, but uh, was it uh, emergency teaching? Was it distant? Was it distributed? Was it mobile? Was it remote? Was it online? Was it blended? Virtual? Hybrid? We, we hear many terms about what actually is going through. Uh, so um, understanding what did is, uh, is all over the world. Everyone is questioning what did exactly do? What do online or emergency teaching or remote teaching? Uh, there are many names given by people about what exactly was happening. Uh, online has many uh, uh, any ways to, to implement it. And uh, we need to understand exactly how we are going to select the format for our online. It's going to be fully online, blended 50-50, blended 25, uh, to 50 percent. Uh, what is the pace? Is it uh, self-paced, class-paced, uh, class-paced or self-paced? Number of students, the ratio of the student faculty member, uh, what kind of pedagogy is going to be implemented? Uh, is expository, practice, expository, collaborative? Uh, what is the instructor's role? Uh, as an active uh, online or small presence online or none, uh, the, uh, the listen or read, complete problems or answers, explore simulation and resources, collaborate with us, uh, online communication, uh, is it synchronous, uh, synchronous, uh, some blend of the source of feedback, automated, or teacher, or peer. So we had experience with what happened, the emergency, the this online, and these are all uh, yani experiences that we can learn from uh, and, and try to evaluate the uh, different aspects of this uh, emergency more teaching that we do in terms of the context, the input, the process, and the product. How can we uh, uh, use this experience to uh, benefit our future uh, uh, teaching and uh, academic experiences? So we need to go through evaluations of the context, the input, the process, and the product of what we do. And there are uh, personal uh, circumstances also that uh, another layer of the experience. Uh, privacy issues are important, like uh, the non-use of videos uh, in, in, uh, for, for, for the students. Uh, it creates more physical and visual distancing. Everyone is working in isolation, including the instructor. It's not only the student is working in isolation, it's also the instructor. Uh, so uh, this is a common uh, uh, picture from online studios in, in other parts of the world. But this is actually what happens here. Uh, as an instructor is sitting alone with uh, black uh, screens uh, with some uh, letters uh, on the, uh, and there is no uh, uh, existence visually or physically of, of students. So this is, this is not only learning in isolation, it's also teaching in isolation. 
and both sides really uh, experiences. Uh, um, uh, challenges uh, challenges uh, relating to the expression expression of uh, the, 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 the emotions of, uh, of attendees. Uh, so currently, I don't know how each one of you feels. Uh, you are using <coughs> some of your senses, not all of them. Uh, but uh, we cannot uh, under, any, get the emotions of each one. So actually, uh, what we are doing is not only teaching, it's a new culture. Uh, from the physical to the virtual, uh, we are uh, yeah, jumping to a new world. Uh, we need to understand, is it a tool uh, or idea or method or an approach or a technique or a, a, a new process? So how do we uh, understand it's been uh, types of uh, instruction means and how uh, uh, um, and uh, develop our future uh, in, uh, for the structure we need to look at means and compare it to, to face uh, the environment the, uh, the documentation uh, the, uh, these are items that are usually in this uh, studio uh, manual. Uh, so the studio can, uh, includes these uh, uh, these these uh, items and uh, need also to uh, think about them for the online studio. So uh, the. Junior students, they need to be looked after. They don't have previous experience. They didn't have opportunity to, to uh, make friends. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, we, uh, we, we need to find ways to make them uh, the new technology. So looking back at Bloom's taxonomy, and the, the, the famous uh, pyramid of, of uh, Bloom that we all know, uh, it's developing now. It look again at uh, the Bloom economy in 2020, uh, putting communication as a base without communication, uh, the whole thing cannot, uh, cannot uh, work. Uh, go up with other uh, <laughs> learning things. Uh, uh, and again, uh, we learn a lot. Uh, uh, there are many, especially the students' role, uh, and uh, the students student really um, students were able to get new skills of communication. For their working. they lost a lot. Uh, we gained uh, opening to the whole world, uh, having reviewers from different parts of the world, vice speakers. Uh, we have good documentation of what uh, uh, is happening uh, all the time digitally. We can have uh, real-time collaboration uh, between students and instructors, uh, but we lost the one-to-one -one relationship Student to student interface, uh, meeting someone by chance, which is extremely important in architecture to, to, to meet uh, other people in the corridor, in another studio, to visit other studios. This is also important and get feedback from other uh, studios. Uh, the modeling experience, uh, the workshop, this is also lost. Uh, visiting the library, so, and a few few students go uh, to the library nowadays and they depend on the web, but the library was also a place for learning and studying. Having exhibitions and displays.
there seems to be an issue with Dr. Yasser's audio. Um, yes. Yes. Dr. You're back with us? Yes, I'm about to finish. Yes, just one minute. Go ahead. Uh, uh, now everything is becoming form. No casual, uh, no contact. So uh, all these challenges we need to address and uh, find solutions uh, for them uh, before we start the uh, next semester or future uh, online teaching formally. Uh, so having uh, online uh, tools is not enough. We really need to think again about the physical spaces of the campus and how to transform them into virtual spaces. Uh, we need to rethink the notion of time. Uh, time is not a uh, time schedule as we used to have before. We have uh, uh, open uh, and parallel times that we can work through. Uh, so maybe in the future we'll need less classrooms and more IT. Uh, we need the virtual workshops and fabrication labs that students can can work online, uh, online printing and, and model making facilities. So we need all the spaces that we used to have, but in a new way, in a virtual way. So probably we need the student to open the computer and find the uh, spaces that they used to have, but in a virtual way. A gallery, a studio, a corridor, and they can select to go to the corridor and look at the displays, or go to a studio, or go to the workshop and print. So students can select to, 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 to go to any of these facilities at any time. Uh, so it's not limited to a time schedule. The, 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 the department is open all the time and they can visit a lecture, they attend, they can go find someone in the cafeteria or attend a classroom. So they need to feel as if they are living inside the department, not uh, learning through scheduled time and scheduled uh, delivery of information and knowledge. So they can walk in the corridor and look at uh, other students' displays. They can go to the uh, exhibition hall uh, to the gallery, uh, to uh, attend a lecture, or go to the faculty members' offices uh, for office hours. So uh, we need a whole new uh, experience, a virtual experience that, uh, that really uh, uh, satisfies the needs of the architectural education uh, and the studio experience. So to conclude, I think uh, it's an opportunity to make a leap, to open up and step up to a new world. Uh, and um, from this experience, I think education will not continue to be as it was before. I think uh, we are going to go through a new world. Whether it is that old world or not, uh, we still don't know. Uh, thank you very much and uh, I, appreciate your patience uh, for the long uh, lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Thank you so much. I would like uh, to uh, welcome everyone who joined us and I would also like to remind people if you have any question, please feel free to type it in the chat and you may leave also your email address and we're going to get back to you inshallah. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Yasser. And I apologize about the glitch that happened at the beginning, even though we were online before we even started. But again, I guess you can never uh, be too prepared. <coughs> I greatly appreciate your presentation and uh, I'm glad to introduce our next presenter who is Dr. Aisha uh, Aishi Yusuf. Dr. Aisha Yusuf is the acting director of the master's program at, uh, of the architecture in Dalhik University <laughs> and a student professor uh, who received her PhD, her MSc and bachelor degree from Istanbul Technical University. She was founding member of two architecture departments in Turkey and has uh, experience in student mobility program. She's been teaching since 1990 and she joined Dar al-Hikmah since 2014. So she's been with us uh, since that time. 
Uh, welcome, Dr. Aishi, and uh, the, floor, the floor is yours. Please feel free to start. Thank you for the nice session and Dr. Yasser, I comprehend. I incredibly to be here and uh, in an amazing presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'm in my screen now. Okay. Um, and, uh, Dr. Aisha, there is voice problem. Excuse me, dear. The voice is not clear at all. Can you do something, for example, just in regard to the place where you are in? Maybe the connection is not perfect there. Uh, yeah, but I uh, hear me. Because we, we can't. I'm sorry no. to tell you that we can't understand anything even now. While you're answering me, we can just hear your voice, but we can't understand what you're talking about, dear. Uh, uh, doing the whole, um, uh, last one uh, until I just ask. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jafar, uh, are you... Um, Dr. Ja Jafar, are you ready, Dr. Jafar, until Dr. Aish can uh, fix the problem? Of course, of course, there's no problem. Thank you, Dr. Jafar. Dr. Aisha, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I just want to apologize from our attendees, but you know that technical problems may occur. Dr. Aisha, if you can log off now yeah. and to fix the problem, and we will uh, uh, meet oh. now Dr. Uh, Jafar, uh, Ms. Hind. Can you please introduce Dr. Jafar, if you want? Sure, sure. Dr. Jafar, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Exactly. Inshallah, you have a very impressive uh, CV, but most of the time we're going to wrap it to the most important components. Dr. Jafar is the member of some of the world's most prestigious professional bodies, including the Royal Institute of British Architects in the UK, Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts in UK and the Royal Australian Institute of Architects. He presently lives and practices in New Zealand where he has conducted uh, different uh, research and worked with different programs. And he's also been teaching in Dar al Hikmah for the past three years. And you traveled extensively and has developed international connections through professional and academic associations. Uh, Dr. Jafar, you may start your presentation. Thank you uh, very much, uh, 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 Madam, for introducing me. Uh, is my voice, voice very clear? 
Yes, it is, doctor. Okay, thank you very much. So first of all, I thank uh, uh, Daryl Hickmer for uh, 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 giving me this opportunity uh, to teach there in the, uh, in the wonderful university campus and to teach uh, some of the most uh, wonderful students I have experienced uh, in my teaching career. And uh, congratulations uh, to my students. And uh, this particular talk today is going to be about virtual capstone projects. So I have been doing virtual, uh, I mean, capstone projects for the undergraduate program uh, for the past two years. And the present uh, presentation will be on uh, the projects which we did this year and the kind of challenges we face and what is the expectation of students uh, uh, in these capstone projects through virtual learning. So uh, basically I would like to introduce uh, another lady, His, her name is Suman Faruqi. She, she handled the section two and uh, myself section one. Uh, we had approximately about 28 students, 26 students to be precise. Uh, and uh, uh, most of them have done a wonderful job and we have an international jury who was extremely happy about our work, which you will see as the, uh, as the presentation progresses. So first of all, uh, I should, uh, I should, uh, I would like to emphasize the vision of our university. Uh, Daryl Hickmer's vision uh, is to become a premier institution of higher education for women in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and a model for teaching and learning. And the graduates will be capable of bringing about positive change for the betterment of self, society and humanity with the aim of pleasing the creator. Absolutely wonderful. And I, I, I have full trust and belief that the students that are going out will be exactly doing that. And I wish them all the best. And the mission of a university is to graduate women of uh, uh, who would accomplish, who will be accomplished leaders and entrepreneurs. So this gives an extreme freedom for women to be the leaders of their own heart and they can, uh, in their own profession and they can wonderfully perform. And I see that string of leadership within them as we progress through the project and they are wonderful students. Uh, so as per the course description, the Capstone project helps the students to develop and discover new insights regarding significant local, regional and global challenges. So this course instructions, course description is based on our curriculum, which is devised by our uh, previous faculty, previous curriculum developers, uh, based on the uh, University of uh, Colorado, Denver and uh, most of the processes that we adopted are based on the NAB uh, process and uh, we, uh, we were almost like put on track to take care of that. Now, this year, the spring 2019 and 20, the theme which I developed for, uh, for, for my students was architecture and people and never realized how it, it will be in our COVID situation. I never even thought about COVID situation and I talked about architecture and people, which is not a new subject to us. It's well known architecture is for the people, by the people and of the people. Surprisingly, the primary aim of this theme is to bring architecture closer to people. The democratic nature of architecture by, by the people, of the people and for the people was essential to understand the very nature of architecture, which thrives with the people at the tribes with the people of different scales and functions and cultures. So they meet differently to different people. And the present scenario where we have architecture which doesn't really respond to the inner feelings of the people. And this is the time that I wanted my students to talk about architecture through their heart. Then that's the whole idea. And then what we did is that we developed sub themes like people and places, people and learning people and wellness, people and adventure. So we divided the sub themes and we wanted the students to select a topic within these, or maybe it was not limited. They can go beyond that. In fact, some of them gone beyond these topics and then, then they've done a wonderful job. And some of them come out, came out with, uh, uh, with something what we call you know, uh, uh, some sort of an utopian ideas, uh, which futuristically thinking about how cities would survive 
in the coming dangers, which we, some of it, the litmus test of it is face, we are, we are facing now. Now, each and every student was supposed to present a small synopsis, which we actually prepared for our exhibition. So like, for example, people in adventure, we had Allah Abu Sadr Al Khatib. She did post-war reconstruction in the ancient city of Palmyra. She actually wanted to establish uh, a kind of a, 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 a kind of a, a heritage hotel uh, in, in, a, in a very, very sensitive uh, archaeological site, which is the Palmyra, which is, uh, which is, you know, it is in the war zone, but of course it's not in the real war zone, but it's, it's struggling. So this lady comes from that region, so she wants to talk uh, uh, entirely about it and she, she, she in fact involved her parents, her father who had the first hand experience about, uh, about the place and she developed the scheme entirely based on that. I'm not going to show all the 28 but I'm going to show you some samples. And then we had architecture and learning, we have Asil Ramadan Al Malti. The project was based in Kaust, which is the King Abdulaziz University of Science and Technology, a wonderful modern, pro, modern campus done by HOK, and it's a platinum rated LEED uh, uh, certified building. And then uh, we, she wanted to think of learning in a very different angle. She wanted how architecture and engineering can be learned through VR, AR, AI, and all the internet of things that processes involve in our understanding. In fact, this project is highly futuristic because the present context, the way we are in lockdown, the way we are being isolated, but this is, a, a, this. we never thought that this project would become like a stepping stone into the futuristic learning of architecture. She did a wonderful job and the site was based in, uh, uh, based in Kaust in, in Jeddah. So if you happen to come to Jeddah for my international participants here and you love to go there, uh, being there, it's a wonderful project. So I'm going to show, I'm going to talk about Lujain Abu Saba, uh, a wonderful student. I see a lot of future in her and she did some, a wonderful project called The Lost War, adapting to the consequences of climate change. And through this project, we could see the sensitive approach of students and their feelings, how architecture would be an important uh, uh, aspect of their lives because that is what is going to matter, the, matter to them in the future. And we all know during this lockdown, the whole world got cleaned up. So we had clear skies, we saw the water being cleaned up. So it's so beautiful. I, mean, I live in New Zealand, even though I'm an Indian, I live in New Zealand. I saw many of the rivers which were actually polluted, were actually looking so pure and pristine and it was wonderful. So this was about her concern about, uh, about the sea rise and how the habitations need to be adapted, the resilience factor and all that stuff. So these are three simple examples to, to tell you about how the thought process went on. So the design process, the stages of design process that we undertook was the first phase, design phase, which is called the research phase, which we took for 15 weeks. Uh, and then uh, that phase was most important because that developed a proposition and a project. So this was a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with the students most of the time. Uh, it was a discussion about the project and what would the project contain in itself. The next phase was the programming of the project, then the process of the project, and then the presentation of the same project. So that was another 15 weeks. Now this is the stage, phase, sorry, this has to be phase two. That is a phase two, which was most critical. That is the green box, what you see, was the most critical. And then we had to enter the phase, uh, enter the phase of phase to phase to actually online learning. The university was good enough or kind enough to provide us training, um, even though we used to do online lectures. I myself used to do a lot of online lectures, but online studio was something absolutely new for me. So uh, I, I, I extremely appreciate the support from the IT department. They conducted the, uh, uh, the, 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 the training and everything was facilitated and it was so wonderful. The migration from face-to-face -to, -face to the online was, uh, uh, even though it had some initial hitches of internet issues, 
but you need to buy an internet with a high speed, which I'm doing right now to uh, take care of my lectures. And I had to do that for my students. So look, the, the image what you see is, uh, uh, is, uh, is another project uh, in a very sensitive site uh, 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 in Saudi Arabia, in southwestern part of Saudi Arabia, and uh, by the student called Yamama. And, uh, and uh, she, uh, she developed uh, the, uh, everything online through, um, uh, through her modeling process and all that stuff. So if you look at those green, red sketches, of which are basically done by me to make her experience the depth of space, experience depth of architecture, and that gives them the feeling. So it was like the students would come and present and then we get onto it and start working on them, working along with them. It was such a wonderful experience. And I think I tell you what I felt, the architecture can be almost uh, online. And I was that impression, but that would change in the end. And I'm going to show you how it changes. Now, uh, uh, sketches like this, for example, this is by Amal Ali. She did a polytechnic project for the women in Saudi Arabia and that uh, 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 and some of those sketches like these which tells about the connectivity, the proportion, the scale and uh, all these elements that uh, vertical and horizontal elements that needs to be worked out in elevation. I'm just showing you some sample sketches so that you know to understand uh, how the whole online discussion process went through. Then this is another one by Rawan Shannon. She did a project near uh, uh, Cornish, and uh, this is uh, uh, an interesting project. And uh, to get the feel and depth of the whole project, we need to sit and discuss with the students, even though they are online, they're far away from us. The drawing bring, brings us closer. Their drawing connects us together, the teacher, the professor, and the student. It's the drawing that is in between. So it, if you had a good sketching talent, I mean, if you really have a good sketching talent, I can tell you, you can do wonderful online studios. And I have, I'm extremely happy with the kind of outcome we had and the international jury were extremely appreciative of it. Uh, so very similar, this is Allah's work, uh, again, in, um, uh, 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 in, in her project where we were discussing on elevations, how the windows need to be proportioned, whether it is right or wrong, how the arches don't really sit in there. They, uh, uh, we need to think in terms of the architectural language and the color and all that stuff. And uh, again, a master plan and sketching over it, running over the cluster, how the cluster need to be formed, how to break the cluster, bring the spaces. All these things went on for discussion and it was wonderful. And we saw the students responding extremely well, most of them, were extremely, extremely well, and uh, and I could see a lot of uh, 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 a lot of positive signs through this online virtual learning. Uh, Hind, I think you should let me know the time, by the way, otherwise I'll be going on a lot. Uh, sure. So this is again by Rim Natife. She did an urban park project uh, uh, based on the uh, 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 UNESCO regulations in Jeddah. She connected the open spaces with the community. And we just to give me a simple sketch like this would play, would talk a lot of words. I mean, it could, it could, it could ignite the students' passion. It could, it could make them think, it could make them rethink, it could make them to, to open up the creativity, which is very important. And I can tell you the, 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 the students of Dar al-Hikmah have extraordinary talent, an absolutely extraordinary talent I'm very pleased with. And then what happened is when all these processes uh, came to a conclusion, we had to do a, a jury. So jury is very important because without jury, you cannot give them marks and you have to pass them or whatever, give them the results and grades to be submitted to the university. Now, what I did is to, uh, before the, the, at the end of the last studio and at the beginning of the jury, I started motivating the students to, uh, uh, posting a posters like this, you know, like final year capstone project. I actually do it. I'm very well connected with uh, my social media 
and I did, a, uh, I almost connected to, to the world over. I mean, I have those platforms where I communicate not just with my students, with the world, the students around the world, all my students around the world. So a poster was sent out and uh, the theme was explained and uh, uh, we had international jury. We had Dr. Albert Rafiti and then uh, uh, and, uh, international academics like Dr. Albert Rafiti from Auckland University of Technology, the wonderful uh, person. You're going to see him soon. And he was, uh, uh, he was associated with the Museum of Modern Art New, New York and all that stuff, he works on um, uh, 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 Pacific uh, culture. And then uh, Dr. Fleur Palmer from same Auckland University of Technology, all two of them were my colleagues when I was in AUT before coming to Saudi Arabia. And she's a, a very eminent scholar in terms of uh, indigenous architecture. And both of them have a very subtle approach. Then in Saudi academics, we have Adil Al Zahrani, Vice Dean of Architecture at the King Saud, uh, King Abdulaziz University of Jeddah. We had a wonderful gentleman, a friend of mine. He was uh, extremely fantastic in his comments. He was very appreciative of our work, and he's a great, uh, great guy. And then we had Dr. Mustafa Sabak, uh, another friend of mine from uh, King Abdulaziz University. Dr. Ahmed Beek, as a he's a digital man and he's a beam man, he, he was with us, and Dr. Amal Syed, King Saud University in Riyadh. Then we had Dr. Yasser Mahoub from our internal faculty, Dar Darul Hikma faculty. Then of course, myself, uh, myself and Ms. Suman Faruqi, who was the cross grader. Now, the jury slots were allocated, each and every student was given specific time, and then we started at nine o'clock because it was almost during Ramadan, after the breaking of the fast, the jury would go, it sometimes extended up to three o'clock in the morning, and uh, it went on and on, so every two, six student had a break, after that 15 minutes of coffee break, uh, so it went on by themes, and both the section students were mixed up, and the themes were combined and then they were presented. So it was a wonderful opportunity for all the students to be exposed to most of the jury uh, because one or two of the jury members would, would come, wouldn't would come on the second day and we have new members coming on the second day and plus majority of them remained with the, both the days and it was a wonderful uh, opportunity for, for them to share with the international jury. So the criteria for assessment it was uh, uh, the concept statement by the students, which is basically uh, comes out of the research work. Then we had master planning, design process and spatial planning, which is a very critical part of uh, the project. Elevations and sectional development to see how the aesthetics are implemented as a part of the project. Formal articulation, material strategy and 3Ds and all that stuff. Physical model, if that was possible, because in a, in COVID situation, it was uh, it was a little bit of a problem, but we encouraged doing 3D, uh, 3D, uh, what do you call uh, uh, 3D developments, graphic and verbal presentation. This was the most important part of it because uh, uh, if you remember, you can you can just make one sketch and talk three hours about it. I'm good at it actually. But my students are. I mean, terrific at it. I mean, they talk a lot. I mean, they, they really uh, benchmark the project solidly uh, in jury. And then at the end of it, they're supposed to present a booklet. Now, if you look at uh, 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 this project, so this is the, uh, the, uh, there is a KAUST project. This is a digital school of learning. This is a slide taken directly from the international jury to show you the quality of work that Dal Hikma produces uh, 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 by, by producers through its students. And I'm be very happy to, to, uh, uh, to be part of it. And then we had this uh, tourism project by Yamama, which is a shot taken uh, from one of her presentation. And, uh, and as a wonderful, talented girl, she's right now doing a competition, which I'm trying to uh, be supportive of uh, that group. And then we had another wonderful student, uh, uh, Ala Al Khatib, uh, very sensitive to environment. They're very passionate about the place they come from. And that passion is displayed in, our, in their architecture. And we actually sort of tried to, uh, you know, uh, 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 to uh, enhance the passion within them. And that's the, uh, uh, that's the motivation the teacher has to give. And uh, if, if, if you, if, if I have to show this uh, uh, video. Project, which is inter Interactive Engineering College. 
This is my cut. I, I will not show the whole video. I'll just show you spots and bits of it so that you get a feel of what is happening. Stone project. Of the canvas, the main canvas. So my site is located. the uh, uh, ex extended roofs and shaded um, uh, with, uh, sorry. I'm sorry about this video thing. So it's having a little problem with the video. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, My screen now? Yeah. Got me. Okay. So I'm just wondering uh, if we could at least hear this some is, uh, extremely important. But um, uh, what came to my mind when she was telling the story and then. Was Aliyah Towers and even there. The, the, the staff in the, in the academy, but you will be, uh, you have to, you have to complete the project at the end, you see. You are things in a very oblique way, in a very beautiful way. I loved your narrative. It was, um, it was absolutely captivating for me. Um, I know that I, as a student, I was a bit like you and, and that, um, I just really sometimes wanted to resist actually building what was recognizably a building because I found it so, um, you know, there is, there are so many issues involved with how we design things. And I'm, I know that probably um, juries have So. Uh, coming back to my lecture, there were a couple of videos, but unfortunately I could not show it because of the speed of the internet here. Uh, 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 then, you know, uh, feedback from the international jury. Uh, we found that this is the survey that was conducted and we found that, it, that the strongest part uh, is the design development, which is got the highest ranking. Uh, and then we had verbal presentation. So you could see that this, these are two critical parts of an, any architectural project. So the design development is the most important part and how you express that is another part which is, uh, which is clearly explicit in this survey and the uh, response of the international uh, 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 jury members. Now, if you look at their comments, they said the best projects were exemplary and compares well with projects from new students in New Zealand and USA, which I have reviewed what they have in common apart from these are very intelligent students. So my students are intelligent students are, uh, and these students have chosen well-researched and targeted case studies. This was a wonderful review to be part. Thank you, Dr. Albert Rafiti from New Zealand. And this makes us really, really proud of how we performed even do, during this critical positions, tough conditions of COVID lockdown. And and we do, we have well. do we have five minutes? Okay, so when we come to the student feedback, I actually wanted to find out how the students and what is their preferences. So what it is is uh, I asked the students, are you satisfied with the design process that was adopted during the lockdown period of your course and that the students responded 91% of them said yes and which is absolutely corresponding to the, uh, to, to the responses of uh, the international jury which they said that the, the design process was the highest rank uh, along with the presentation. So that means they are very much clear cut if you had a good present, good uh, teacher, uh, I'm sure the process will go very well. And then we, if, uh, and then when I asked them, will you suggest to have a mix face-to-face -face and virtual studio for capstone project? 
absolutely 50-50. So 50% 50 of them, they said yes. 50% of them say no, but they, they're still in a stage of migration. So, so they, they still want to have a face-to-face. -face. It has its own advantages. And that's why the students are still feeling there is a 50-50 uh, ratio here. And then did I, did you get the right feedback uh, during the final jury? They were absolutely 84.6%. So uh, that means that the international juries uh, online uh, virtual were absolutely successful. And I'm sure that will be, uh, be a norm adopted by uh, Daryl Hikma in the future. Then I asked him, was the studio program effective in communicating uh, ideas better than face-to-face? -face? They said, maximum, no. And that's a surprise for me. That means they still want to be uh, in face-to-face -face situation, but they would definitely be uh, 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 preferring for, uh, uh, we'll have to look into the online thing in the future. So will you recommend international jury for final crit? They said yes. Nearly 70% of them, they said they would like to uh, prefer uh, an international jury, probably a virtual online in the future. Now, what are the lessons we learned from the virtual capstone project? The capstone project those successful virtually, the students have preferred to have face-to-face, -face, though most of them have agreed for a combination of both methods. International jury was impressed by the students and hence it is possible to draw expertise from around the world to benefit the institution and the students. Experimental and experiential projects to be encouraged, which might lead to theory-based outcomes. We don't really need to have a definite project. So we need to have the conceptual thinking. What is, that is the most important. That makes them creative thinkers. Virtual design projects need to be encouraged and allow students to take secondary guidance from external faculty who could guide students remotely or develop through negotiated studies. Uh, institutions need to build a robust infrastructure to develop support, uh, develop, help support the online learning process. I think these are some of my recommendations to Daryl Hikma and other, other people who are listening. And I am extremely thankful to, for having given me this opportunity. And thank you for my international friends who have come and joined this discussion. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Jafar. That was quite informative. And uh, we've actually enjoyed the glimpses from the capstone presentations on the, uh, the architecture Instagram account which was beautiful. Thank you so much. I think we have a couple of questions. There was a question in the chat uh, about the program that you, use, um, that you use with your students to draw on their renderings in real time. So can you please answer that? Um, can you hear me? Uh, I think this comes from Christopher. Uh, uh, hi, Christopher. Thank you very much for asking me that uh, 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 tough questions to answer because I, I myself, I'm not a, I, 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 not a, uh, digital man, but uh, my students used most of the time, uh, they used a combination of softwares, they used uh, Rhino, they used uh, uh, Revit, they started developing from uh, going a hand sketch to, uh, uh, to analog drawing to digital drawing. So they, in digital version, they used AutoCAD, they used uh, 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 Revit, they used uh, Rhino, and uh, uh, they, some of them in presentation, they used Vimeon, and a whole lot of stuff and mixed media. They use the other platforms like Photoshop and other stuff to make their final presentation. So uh, it was a wonderful combination of digital tools that they used for the final presentation. So do we have another question yes, somewhere? Yes, please. Can you help? Uh, I don't think there is, an, there is a, I don't think there is another question. Let's see the last two messages. Um, actually, everyone, it seems that uh, we're lucky to have you uh, in, in this presentation. Dr. Jafar, everybody is really pleased of the presentation. Uh, again and again, I want to thank you for this great presentation. And I will move the platform now to uh, introduce Dr. Aisha. Thank you, Dr. Jafar.
Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ms. Hind, are you here? Are you over there? Yes, I'm over there, yes. Yeah, <laughs> good. Take I think there, there was one last question, Dr. Jafar, in the chat. I think it's, um, it's addressed to you about the software used for the virtual. Uh, I assume it's Zoom. Oh, for the virtual, we are using Zoom, of course, yes. Okay, and um, are we going, to, there is also another question, one last question. Are we going, uh, are we going to leave our design discussions on battery sheets for online learning? Uh, not really, not really. Uh, I think the battery sheets will be, uh, will be with us uh, all the time, and they're wonderful. And uh, we need them, uh, we need to sketch them. Uh, the digital platforms are just the tools to enhance our, uh, our, our design creative thinking on the butter sheet. So in fact, if you look at, I mean, some of the sketches I did, a small little dots that I put in some, on those digital images, uh, it actually opened up. And I used to say, wow, what is this? I didn't even experience. So it gives you the depth, but I think in paper, in butter sheet, it's much more effective uh, uh, and it's absolutely fascinating and it's going to be there till we have architecture as a learning, uh, 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 learning subject, you know, it is going to be there. Uh, Ms. Hint, can I yeah. follow up on, uh, this is Nada Zaydan, uh, Dr. Jaffer, amazing talk. Um, I wanted to follow up on your uh, method this, of uh, sketching. Is Nada Zaydan? Is it work. Nada Zaydan. Oh, Nada, how are you? Okay. I'm very, very well. I just wanted to add to your, um, uh, the question that was raised on uh, giving feedback uh, in terms of sketching over your students' work. Um, Zoom has the capabilities of sketching over, I'm just, uh, you know, talking to the general attendees. Uh, Zoom has a beautiful um, tool where you can actually sketch over, over the screen if you have a very good, uh, you know, uh, digital pen, like an Apple pen. And you can also use Adobe Acrobat if your, if your students send you add Adobe files, uh, PDF. PDF files, uh, you can also sketch over it and then send it over. These are good methods uh, for us. Maybe Ms. Hint can also elaborate because Ms. Hint uh, teaches in the graphic design department. These are all very, very nice digital tools for sketching over your students' work and then sending it very fast to them so they can see your feedback instantly. Thank you. Yes. yes. So we, uh, we, uh, we actually had... Uh, we had the asynchronous uh, process through uh, virtual online, and then uh, the uh, uh, I mean uh, the, the the process uh, the synchronous was through online, and then asynchronous we used uh, WhatsApp, we used uh, email, and we used sometimes messaging system. So we used all and Blackboard and all that stuff. So it was a secondary platform which we used to communicate, and it was very effective. And I gave my students uh, twenty four seven, so I'm I'm available the whole 24 hours for them and I know they would, uh, they would send a message at 2 a.m. in the morning and they would never expect an answer from me but they would exactly at 2 a.m. within two minutes I'd reply to them and that was for them. I, I see Dr. Yasser al Mutiri asking Microsoft team is better than Zoom as it used as control and archive. So I, I'm not sure about, we haven't used Microsoft Team, uh, uh, but as I, I was told it's good too. Uh, but I have been using uh, WebEx, which is very good. And also uh, uh, we had the Google uh, stuff, which is also quite good. But I think uh, Zoom is quite interesting uh, as long as the messages and the lectures are encrypted and there is some safety uh, concerns at, uh, earlier, but I don't know if that is sorted out. Dr. Yasser Bahjoub, I have the camera is now um, is basically on you. Would you want to share any yes. any thoughts or give feedback? Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank Dr. Jaffer for the excellent presentation of uh, the capstone course. 
and uh, of course we both share the, the experience and uh, the knowledge and the information and uh, um, uh, sketching uh, using the annotation of the Zoom and uh, exchanging uh, experiences with the students and uh, uh, I think also the WhatsApp uh, group was uh, very instrumental in connecting with the students and uh, uh, and uh, de deciding on meeting times and reminding reminders and sending uh, emergency or urgent uh, uh, messages. Um, I think the experience uh, as a whole uh, succeeded in achieving its goals. Uh, which was emergency uh, situation and uh, that everyone had to deal with. Uh, the problems that uh, that uh, uh, the problems are still there. Uh, we need to look at the whole experience, not just uh, delivering uh, information or feedback. Uh, I think the students should be involved in 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 the thinking process and uh, tell us what exactly. Uh, can be uh, done to uh, bring back the holistic experience of the uh, studio and the department and the university experience. Uh, things do not happen only inside classrooms or studios. Um, learning happens all the time while you are uh, in, the, in the university, in the city, especially for architecture. Uh, so I think we, we need to look holistically at the situation. We have managed to solve the problems of the delivery of the studio, the feedback, the classrooms, but there are still other problems that we didn't have time to look at. And I think we need to, uh, to consider uh, 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 urgently uh, because uh, the, the planning for these things uh, takes uh, weeks and months and we need to really think are we going to start online next semester is it going to be hybrid some online some face to face is, are we going back to face to face and forget all about this online experience what lessons can we take here to the face to face uh, uh, reality that we used to have before uh, dr yasser so much. I think these are very valuable uh, points and uh, important questions to be answered. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time, so I would like to allow Dr. Icy to start her presentation. And I hope that you can answer the questions in the chat box. There is obviously a conversation going on there, which is important for all the attendees. Thank you so much. Dr. Icy, you may start your presentation. Yes. How is the sound now, everyone? Yes, it's good. Okay. Excellent. So I, Excellent. Okay, I will keep the video closed, uh, if I may. I will just share my screen and the voice could probably be better. Okay, uh, as I said before, there are three main parts in this presentation. Uh, what, part one, I call it Reflective Practitioner from Donald Shun, uh, and I will explain what I mean with that. And part two is continuous uh, feedback through Blackboard, uh, private feedback. Um, and part three, the difficulties with visual learners during um, the challenges, I mean, uh, during um, some of the capstone research phases and how we could uh, come up with solutions through online uh, tools. Okay. Um, the part one is the MARC studio. Since I only had five students and uh, the other two presenters heavily um, uh, yani gave their, gave their priority to studio teaching. I will keep this part very short. Um, okay, this is um, our plan of study in master's. Uh, as you see, uh, in the last year, we have this thesis research as step one in fall semester, and th uh, the studio following uh, the same uh, research uh, in spring semester. Um, in uh, fall semester, uh, you can see uh, the group of uh, subjects and the clusters a little bit. Our fall semester in instructors, um, thank you very much for their efforts. 
And uh, typically this is a research course with the research topics. Uh, when it comes to the spring, the project in satisfaction of the master's degree, this is the last uh, work they produce uh, to be able to graduate from the program. Uh, one of the instructors had left and I was the replacement. Uh, the same groups continued, uh, the same topics continued. Uh, in this one, uh, when the lockdown happened, uh, we were around this area, architectural drawings. Uh, with the advanced students and some were you know, coming um, in, with their own space, but uh, we were around this part. So we had done with majority of the decisions, the studio direction, uh, the design directions were clarified and uh, we were developing uh, architectural drawings. Um, now I will highlight this reflective practitioner part again. A uh, majority of uh, instructors I'm sure they know Donald Shun and uh, reflection in action and reflection on action um, definitions coming um, from uh, the professional's behavior uh, based on his ex examination on the professional behavior. By reflecting in action, uh, what we mean professionals reflect on experiences and conduct experiments in the circumstances which are not usually expected, like we have all done. Uh, with the lockdown. And then what they do, reflect on action uh, after it has happened, they go back and they evaluate, uh, they try to see what was uh, good and what should be kept and what should be uh, revised. Okay, uh, so with that mind, um, the first thing we had to do, we didn't have one week break, like the semester break, uh, the midterm break, the undergrads have. In the masters, we had to continuously without stopping. And our studios went on uh, with no break, actually. Uh, even on the night of um, March 9, when the lockdown happened, we had a studio session. I will show what the instructor came up with. What we did quickly, um, we used WhatsApp and Zoom together uh, because I did I happened to not to bring all the tablets, the second laptop, anything this semester without knowing this would have happened, thinking that I had a very small group of students as well. So I used the WhatsApp. Uh, I asked my students to send uh, their work through WhatsApp and I started sketching on them live through Zoom as a second uh, attendee in the Zoom sessions. Uh, you will see this student is trying to see the um, airflow with an apartment, existing apartment. She's trying to work uh, on a facade retrofit project. And uh, this was a bit earlier phase um, in a school project and the other one had a communal living. So we were trying to sketch on the spaces in between. Uh, again, uh, this lockdown night, um, one of our instructors, Dr. Fakiha, uh, he shared this picture with me on the day. Uh, saying that he would not stop and he would give the studio lecture that night. What happened is uh, on his desk, you see, there are two uh, carpenter clumps. Uh, and there is a square board here, all tied up. He would play his mobile phone here. Uh, there is a background sound, I don't know. Somebody probably needs to, okay. Uh, the mobile phone would be up here. He would get the printed um, projects uh, sent by the students, he would directly sketch on paper and trash paper. So uh, the camera would be reflecting uh, through Zoom uh, live um, sketching on uh, feedback on the student projects. So that's typical reflecting uh, in action um, work. And then obviously we should have had uh, better tablets with us. Even this person is teaching physics and he's implementing, um, improvising the ways how the tablets could be used. Anyhow, so the results, um, I will only share a few uh, just to give you the idea uh, what they have done as the final studio. Uh, one of our students, uh, Lujaina Zuni, uh, she was working on the prefab housing. Uh, she had the research the previous semester checking the Saudi market, whether uh, the users or uh, the contractors would be interested in prefab housing. It is being done, but not at a large scale. Um, and she 
designed um, a, a neighborhood in Jeddah with um, um, the, the approach she selected in prefab system. Uh, what we will see here um, before, sorry, yeah, before the midterm, she was already trying to bring the clusters together, the circulation systems, green roofs, etc. And then uh, the, the plans were already developing. What she did during the lockdown was to further um, elaborate on the facades. And the last uh, thing uh, she came up with was the design guidelines for future uh, prefab uh, studio, um, uh, prefab uh, projects. A housing project. Um, this is um, the way how the master studio ended. So uh, they first started with the research, they went through the design, and then uh, the result was kind of guidelines um, obtained based on um, design research. Um, the other student, um, this is not from my section, this is from Dr. Mustafa Sabah section, Haifa, uh, she was working on um, a framework uh, for designing sustainable mountain resorts in Azir. Uh, all of those, the previous one actually, it was presented to the housing authority uh, under the um, investment projects. Lujain's project um, was, um, yani it was it, there was an interest in her project, so she's going to submit it under that scheme. Again, Ms. Haifa is uh, trying to work on um, a sustainable mountain resort framework to be submitted to the authorities. Um, what uh, they did in this one, uh, they did not actually design the projects, but what they did, uh, they had started with the fall research, but of course it was a dissertation format uh, result. Uh, they tried to convert it into um, a publication and also like online uh, booklet. So it was more accessible uh, for everyone rather than a typical written dissertation uh, to finalize the studio. Uh, another student from my section, uh, she was doing a facade retrofit. This, uh, she selected uh, one of the typical apartments available in Jeddah and try to improve the daylight and airflow. Um, so um, the, the results were again, uh, guidelines for future uh, retrofit projects. Um, that's from the masters. And um, I was also teaching capstone research and um, yani I, I found two, um, tools very useful one is available on blackboard but we have not used it that way i checked with my other colleagues they also said they didn't use it that way again capstone research for the undergrad graduate students is the thesis phase and then the next semester it goes on with the design phase um, let's see what these two tools uh, helped us uh, in what way it helped they helped us um, you know, when you're writing a thesis, uh, you need regular feedback from the instructor. What would happen in normal conditions, they would come to my office, we would sit and read, or they would send the um, text in advance, I would read and make comments, either directly on that, and I would send it back through email. What happened with Blackboard journals, uh, we created a journal for each assignment. So uh, each assignment actually represented one chapter of the thesis. Uh, so it, privately, we were able to work with each student uh, through written feedback, asyn asynchronized, sometimes synchronized, if it's within the class um, or within the office meetings. And we created a live thesis template so they could just add the, each folder into that when they are done with the whole research. Okay, uh, so journals are some of the tools. If you go under course tools, you would be able to see them. Many of my colleagues, I know they use them, but maybe not for giving feedback or prepare students for um, assignment submissions. I'm not able to open these because uh, the university, they upgraded the Blackboard. Now the journals are not accessible any longer. But I will show you how it works from the Blackboard help page. Um, so the, the student enters um, his, um, in this case, an early work, a, an initial you know, introduction or something like that 
to the given assignment. Uh, the feedback is privately given and then uh, it may go on and on. Uh, so like a folder for each assignment, but it's kept on Blackboard rather than uh, communicating through emails and uh, creating folders in your mailbox. And the mailbox got full very quickly during the lockdown period uh, because we couldn't archive our email. Okay, so uh, the main advantage I found with journals uh, was like you can keep track of the progress of the students how many times she revised and what she submitted, whether she was later uh, submitting later than uh, the classmates. And um, all easy feedback was recorded, uh, written feedback. You can give, give them images, you can add links, you can uh, give separate feedback and upload the material there. Uh, you can add rubric if you want to create the process. Uh, then uh, it, grades will be automatically reflected in the grade center. It automatically creates another column for the journal in the grade center. And what you could also do if the student is keen on um, giving, um, you know, uh, getting higher grades or uh, doing further work on what's previously submitted until the due date, you can update the grades, obviously, if you see further effort. Okay, uh, so that part, I think um, some of you, if you haven't looked into the use of journals, might find it useful, especially for this kind of courses, and I will definitely use them in the future. The other part, uh, sometimes we do have um, challenges with some visual learners, uh, if it's all text and uh, written pieces. Let's see uh, how what online tools are available to help you in that uh, case. Um, the Capstone research is uh, kind of an iterative process like the studio, uh, but it requires a lot of self-reflection from the student side and then uh, both synchronous and uh, asynchronous um, feedback by the instructor and then the student uh, works on uh, uh, her keywords, uh, initial questions, etc. Uh, this is uh, the course topics and uh, I use the journals mainly for um, student survey development, the, the yeah, any, like research design part. And when there was the lockdown, we were doing the literature review, it was halfway through. We had already came up with some keywords, initial research questions, uh, they had done an annotated bibliography, but the literature review was half done. So not really convenient to have a long break <laughs> uh, in between uh, and the changing the, the, the media right in the middle. Anyhow, um, what the course tells us actually, uh, uh, we also, yeah, and that's, uh, we need to um, focus on research analysis synthesis, a bit of critical thinking part. Also, we need to use some research methods uh, like they did, um, they did the surveys um, and um, they also did uh, interviews, uh, ethnographical and phenomenological. What happened with the interviews, they couldn't go and do it face to face due to the lockdown. Uh, they had to rely on Zoom interview uh, techniques and uh, Skype calls or emails. Uh, online surveys, they always worked. Um, okay, let's see the first part again. Uh, we expect students to do research analysis synthesis. So it's like steps of critical thinking. Um, and then uh, when it comes to their habits since uh, early periods on, uh, in the design thinking phase, uh, they are usually dealing with wicked problems, ill-defined problems, uh, but this time it needs to be based on a good context analysis problem, finding, uh, framing, and uh, like some part of the list up on the top is done during the project phase, some is done on the research phase. Um, mainly for the critical thinking, you use deductive and inductive logic, but abductive logic is uh, for the design phase. Some of the challenges obviously is like um, how much they explore the problem. 
before trying to come up with solutions. Usually the main um, barrier is like, it could happen to many of us. Uh, we connect the stated problem to our experiences, to the scope that we could know. Uh, this also is kind of a restriction. So how to break it and how to uh, see the problem from a broader, more nuanced or different people's perspective. Uh, that was one of the challenges and the problems. Okay, so what we see here, um, the critical thinking part, uh, like we said, inductive deductive reasoning is more um, kind of useful in this part. And we had to go and deal with all these elements of codes and what they, in what way we had to respond to um, uh, these parts when uh, you um, select the problem, frame the problem, when you see the background or, and fit the problem within a context. Okay, um, obviously writing um, is limited during the architecture studies and um, blissfully half of my students had a research uh, methods course before and half of them didn't. Uh, so um, some of them are, they found it easier to adapt, uh, but some uh, found it even more difficult. Uh, when they were coming up with, you know, articles, oh, I found this, Dr. Aisha, this is relevant to my subject. When we were checking, it was not the right material that they uh, actually should uh, find because um, they were just quickly going through, you know, typical uh, search engines. We had a library session before the lockdown and a uh, library session through certain um, uh, databases helped them to create their folders under those databases and they could uh, further uh, continue and reach those uh, during the lockdown. Okay, so um, majority of the students enjoy with the last part, uh, the diagrammat diagrammatic models and uh, Obviously, gradually they go to design through freehand sketching and uh, drawing and 3D modeling in the next phase. Uh, what I found in between is like, since they are well trained visually, they can comprehend charts and graphs quickly and they are able to convey complex ideas visually through uh, charts and graphs. So I looked into online diagrams, mapping tools, and how they could actually uh, work on uh, the, the material they had for the literature review, how they could structure their text. Um, okay, um, this is way back from uh, Kant, but uh, this is the simplest, uh, you know, uh, one of the simplest um, um, ways to show, um, and many of the further uh, ones based are based on this, uh, understanding actually is not uh, happening right as soon as you see what it is around you. It takes further steps. And uh, when you start classifying the concepts under categories, then the understanding starts happening. Then you can uh, further continue with reasoning and make judgments. Okay, so uh, we thought of using uh, concept maps and mind maps. Uh, partly to represent uh, what they had and the concepts they uh, obtained through reading uh, in form of diagrams. Concept maps, as you see, uh, a majority of you, I'm sure, using it. Uh, maybe not for literature review, but uh, somehow, again, this came out very really useful. Uh, when you have a good question, uh, according to the, uh, the roles of uh, each uh, concept, you try to create the map. And if it's a concept map, it's more like a tree shape. And uh, you can add the words. And the relations are very clear from one to the other, from one to the other. And uh, usually they help with high level uh, of uh, thinking, scientific research, architecture, etc., uh, rather than basic. Uh, repetition based uh, ones. We are not going to read the whole text, but what we normally do, this is the definition of mind map, uh, uh, sorry, uh, con concept map by Joseph Nowak, who used it a lot. 
uh, in many ways, uh, I got benefit from uh, his um, articles. Uh, this is the definition. So he divided the, the paragraph into several uh, sentences and uh, related some of the con concepts. When we read it just in basic ways, we just highlight uh, the parts which are important for us. Now we needed further tools to represent what we're reading uh, graphically. So the same paragraph actually is transferred uh, as a concept map uh, in this way. Uh, by Noah himself. Um, again, the, the method, you have several concepts, some of them are more important and you show the way how they are related to one another. I also thought of this, we did not use, but in the future we could, word cloud analysis. There is an online tool, it's possible, you upload your paragraph and it creates obviously uh, the most important or highly repeated words uh, for you, it's deep learning um, tool. So uh, that paragraph, actually this map uh, in the um, cloud, uh, word cloud analysis represented mainly learning concepts uh, and gradually if it's fading, it is less important. So it could be a fun tool uh, to play around maybe before creating mind map, uh, concept maps. Okay, uh, we had a lecture on uh, mind maps and uh, concept maps, what they are, how they are different from one another, like mind map has a radial structure, uh, whereas concept map has a tree structure. Mind map focuses on one uh, core concept and then it is diversified and then uh, you use multiple uh, concepts for the concept maps. I gave them a website, uh, which is Canva. We probably a majority of you are familiar. They have several online templates for uh, mind maps. Uh, this is the most advanced one I received from my students. And they actually finished that uh, part very quickly. In even one hour, half an hour, I started receiving the mind maps. This is an advanced one. But uh, it, the software she used to create this, is, yeah, it, what I mean, it's a short exercise. If you have a long enough class, uh, you can do it within the class time. Um, Xmind uh, is the software that she used. This is actually, in origin, it is a mind map, but she started connecting uh, some parts. So she added what she learned from the concept maps a little bit. Um, pre prior to this, uh, the student has very rich thinking, uh, and um, but even for her, it was difficult to structure a text. So I, I'm sure, Yani, uh, even for me to follow up a structure like that was useful. Another example, uh, the drawback with ready uh, online tools for mind maps, you may not always find the right template for you. Though they are smart, they look very nice uh, and they're quick. You can just fill it up one in 15 minutes maximum. Uh, this student preferred to create her own. Uh, like this is her title. Each of those green areas could be subtitles in the literature review and a paragraph uh, flow could be created through those bubbles. Okay. Uh, if you use the link, you will be able to see this um, mapping tool. It's an overview. You see it starts from argument mapping, different mapping tools actually. This is an interactive one. If you click on each of these, you will go to their website directly. Uh, if you see the par parallelogram, that means it's a free um, tool. Uh, our highlight was, <laughs> it was just there uh, in the radar is the concept mapping and mind mapping. What you could use numerous of those for your class assignments, depending on the nature of the topic. Okay, so again, reflection on action. Yes, we use those, but uh, when we started uh, learning further about how to structure your online courses, it came very really useful. At least uh, like when you design it, you can check uh, through a mind map, uh, you can effectively analyze whether all concepts are properly related, whether you are aligned with your PLOs, SLOs, and uh, whether the prior knowledge, it's based on prior knowledge or how to, if you want to create hyperlinks as text, and this is also a useful tool uh, to decide the hierarchy and the flow. 
And even, uh, this is a bit too much perhaps for this lecture, but um, it was used for curriculum review. Uh, this is um, Cornell University Veterinary Medicine College. Uh, they worked together with NOAC uh, to revise their uh, curriculum, uh, like um, the skills, the knowledge, um, and understanding. So, Dr. Icy, Dr. Icy, I'm so sorry, but can we- The last slide. This yeah, this is the last slide missing. The last thing I would say, structure first, then design second. But like our students, we have to design uh, the lectures or the structure very well. These are links for you to use if you're interested in concept maps and mind maps. Thank you very much for listening and your patience. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Aifi. This was very informative and helpful. Uh, we would also like to open the platform for questions. Uh, you may ask uh, your question directly, or you may just send it, uh, type it in the chat box. Thank you, Dr. Aisi. It seems that everyone enjoyed the, uh, the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. If it's so, um, um, if I have my email address, uh, if you would like to know further about our experience, you can always uh, contact us or you just go to the websites and uh, see the tools, how it could be adapted within the course structure. Thank you, Dr. Aisy. Thank you, Dr. Jafar, Dr. Yasser. They were really, really great presentations. Uh, impressive, mashallah. The audience was very interesting, very, uh, Thank engaging. You. Yes, they were encouraging. We received very nice feedback. Thank you, Ms. Hind. Hello. Yes. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, Doctor. Thank Randa. you, Habibi. Thank you for your help and your support and for uh, perfectly moderating the session. Thank Any you. feedback from you presenters before we uh, end the presentation, before we end, leave the platform? Dr. Jafar, Dr. Yadis. So we would like to thank you very much, Dr. Randa and uh, Henda, for your um, for okay. moderating the session. And to my colleagues, of course, Dr. Jafar and Dr. Aisha, everything was wonderful. And uh, thanks for all the and uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Thank you, Dr. Azza. Uh, thank you, thank Dr. Al-Zafar. Dr. Randa Harari, uh, yes. can you send me the feedback? Sure, sure. Uh, actually, I will send you, I have the, the chat definitely will be uh, recorded on my laptop. I will send you all the chats as they are and you will uh, read them all. I will thank send it to much. everyone. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. I thank you so much, now. Doctor. Thank, thank you, Allah Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Dr. Randa, Miss Hind, uh, Dr. Yasser, Dr. Jafar, Dr. Azza, and all the uh, contributors and all participants. Thank you, Dr. Aisha, for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. For your, thank you, Miss Hind. Thank you, doctors. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.